have students that are the children of students that I had once before, so that makes me feel very, 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 very old. Oh. Um, I'm also a Google certified teacher in both levels. I'm a Google certified trainer and I am a Google certified innovator. And I helped uh, bring my school into using the Google, uh, the Google Suite for Education so that we could have a better experience with, online, with learning both online and offline. And fortunately enough, we've been using it for the last six years, more or less. So uh, when it came time to go distance learning, we were very well prepared. So yeah, that's about it about me. Wow, awesome, awesome. Wow, uh, so I think how is it going to start right now? We are going to go through the questions or you just want to introduce uh, something that you would like to start with? Sure. Give me a second. Let me move away from where I am right now because it's very noisy. Sure, I, I totally understand that. The same is happening in my classroom. <laughs> oh my God, that's a totally okay. Yeah, I just uh, really enjoy the video that I've seen. Maybe you've seen the video of Yelena Dikterova. She's shared in her uh, group, I guess, with a child. And I forgot the show, TV show. What was it about? Where the the first child is coming into the cab, uh, the cabinet, the study room of a person, <laughs> and then uh, the taller one is coming. <laughs> it was it's a hit. I, I really enjoy this video. Okay, so okay. just want to use okay. this. Yeah, awesome. Okay. So, um, I'm gonna go look at the questions, and yes. I'll start as much as I can trying to uh, maybe what I was thinking of doing was grouping the questions into like the same uh, like characters about the same product so that we can like agree on just one thing at a time yeah yeah sure okay so um let's do one thing first uh, I'm gonna share my screen just so I can like show you one thing at a time maybe and it's a little less disordered. Okay. Okay, so you guys should be seeing, let me see if I can see myself. Okay. You guys should be seeing uh, my screen right now. Yeah, Are we? that's right. Yeah, okay. awesome. Okay, so basically this is the introduction of where everything in the google suite arrives once you're logged into your google suite account uh like you see over here then you have all these things available to you now yeah. most of these are included within the google suite environment but some of them aren't for example youtube is a, not in the same contract as the other one and in the sense mm -hmm. that there is where one of the big differences is Oh. The difference between a normal Gmail account and an account with G Suite is Gmail accounts have a limit of how much space you can take up, which depends on the Google account, but it's, I think it's like around 10 gigs. I'm not sure. A Google Suite accounts are unlimited. You can store as much stuff as you can try and put in there without any trouble, mainly, unless you go into like copyrighted material. but. Uh, you can put up as much things as you want, and the space is infinite. Uh, in Gmail, if you're a normal person, uh, you can have access to most of the services. But for example, Google Meet, which is very popular right now, is only available for Gmail users so they can attend meetings but not create them, which is a big difference. Um, now, what's the difference between like Google Suite and the other Google services? Google Suite, for example, uh, the Google Street for Education is free for educational institutions. So all of these services are included for free. Uh, Google Street for business costs, I think, not sure right now, but it's something like four to five dollars per user. So it depends okay. on how many users you have. Um, so uh, what are the advantages of Google Street? Which it's like everything else. You it depends on how much you use it. Uh, the big thing right now that's very, very popular right now is Classroom, which everybody uses to manage uh, online classes. And 
you have a school account, it depends on the country. Uh, it, whatever it is that the requirements, for example, here in Colombia, which is my experience, here in Colombia, if you want to buy a .edu, .co account, you have to go through one specific domain provider and you have to prove that you're a school mm -hmm. so that they'll sell you an .edu account. And with that, then, for example, here in Colombia, they require like the paperwork where you're an accredited company, where you're an accredited school and that they can so they, they can verify that you are actually a school. And then with that, then with that domain information, when you already have a domain, then you can apply to have a Google for education license and Google will ask you for other paperwork. And as soon as that's done, you can, you can start up and running and you can create all your student accounts and all that. And, it, uh, and the Google Suite for Education for Schools is free forever. And you can have as many students as you want and as many teachers as you want. Uh, okay, so uh, the main things that we have in, in Google is, for example, here you can see Google Classroom. And my Google Classroom isn't a very good example because I teach technology and my classes aren't uh, very, they're very, I have them maybe once a month. One second. Okay, somebody was calling me and they. Um, <laughs> But this lets me organize. This is a way of communicating with my students and giving them assignments and, re and, and taking them back. So for example, this class is a class that I, yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, let's enable this so it doesn't go crazy. Maybe can ask me again. Okay. It's a bit quiet um, in there, I know. Uh, is it okay with the sound with others? Yeah? I'm trying to look at the chat. So if you have any questions and you, and you, and you. No, no, it's, chat, it's a, okay. So there's a question from Alona. She's asking, what do we need to have a school account? So you have just uh, um, like described that, like, I guess, yes. if, if there is more, uh, if there are more questions, so. Okay. Um, and if you need me to slow down, because I know that I speak very fast, then. You speak faster in Spanish. <laughs> Yeah, much faster. Yeah. Okay. I mean, sorry. Yeah. I mean, I mean that I have my private Google Classroom, so uh, there is no information about school. And as I understand, they have different options. And I yeah, would yeah. like to know if I want to create school account, what kind of things do I need? How can I create a school? Because I know that I need something. What should I have? Okay. You need to have a, a domain name. So you need to have a, the, 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 like the website for the school has to be registered somewhere, okay? But that's in the case of Colombia. I don't know in the case of Russia, if you need to have a particular, uh, if you have to have a particular requirement to be able to have a .edu, .ru, yeah? So that you'd have to find out over there in your country because it varies from country to country, yeah? And uh, generally, in, in the case of Colombia, all we have to do is we have to show paperwork that accredits that we are actually here. After that, it's set it up and it has to be somebody that has ideas of how this works and, and they have to set up the school account, they have to set up all the privacy and all the rights for the different uh, people in the school. So you have administrative accounts, you can have school uh, teacher accounts, and student accounts and that's how that that depends from school to school how they organize that information and that depends on the case Ahora, one of the things that you don't get in in private classrooms is this thing over here the meet link this meet link is a video conferencing suite that is used to be able to communicate with your students so if i was to click here and we had a class and my students knew that there was a class then they click here and they start a conference with me. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so it is connection. Yeah. yeah, the connection is a bit poorly. So yeah. Could you speak a bit louder if you can? Thank you. Oh, okay. I like it. In this case, the, wow, the video awesome. conference is set up over there. And um in, in the security settings, depends on how you set it up. Only students students can only attend uh, video conferences, but they can't create them, okay? Yeah. And, a, and if you're a teacher 
only students from the school can join the class automatically, but not people from outside. This yeah, is good. It, yeah. it has happened that sometimes people from outside arrive in a class and things, uh, and, and they do things that shouldn't be done in a class. Yeah. Put it nicely. Okay? Yeah. So, all right. The main, main, main goal of using things like Google Classroom and everything like this is that uh, underneath Google Classroom and every one of those Google Sheets, it will be uh, very good for cooperative uh, work. So uh, any file with a Google Sheet, Google Docs, or Google Slides can be shared and edited by a lot of different people. And we'll uh, have access to the same uh, file for everyone at the same time. So if one person is attending, then it's just one person. Then all for example, this is the uh, questions that you guys made up. If you decide to add new questions, I'll see them being added as we speak. Yeah. So if Anna right now starts writing somewhere, I can see what she's, uh, I can see after she's pressed enter, I can see what she's written. So it's very useful because lots of people can edit the same file at the same time. And the file is always up to date. You never say, for example, uh, before we were used, everybody had their own uh, Word document or Excel document, and then you send it by email, and the person changed it, and then they sent it back, and then after they send it back, then you have two different copies, and it's a pain in the neck. It's very hard to manage. Yeah. In this case, since everybody's working on the same file, you don't have those problems. Okay. Uh, okay. You know, there's um, a different, so uh, yeah, I want to ask you about the feature when anybody is working on the same field like this document, yeah? Uh, yeah. So there, there are funny names appear, you know, like uh, Hedgehog, Funny Hedgehog, or okay. <laughs> Wicked, okay. I don't know the it's name of this in English. Since, <laughs> since your, your, uh, since you share this file with the Anonymous world. Anonymous Tiger. <laughs> Yeah, since you since you share this file with the word with the world, um, it doesn't require that you sign in to be able to see the file. But it lets you know that somebody's watching the file, and it gives people like different uh, different names. So you have anonymous tiger, and they're normally strange animals. Yeah. So you have tigers and quokkas and kangaroos and all sorts of things. If oh. it's a person that you shared the file directly to, then you will see their picture. So so, so right now we're seeing Anna. Yeah, yeah, and, sure. Uh, there's a, and there's a tiger. And if somebody else is watching, they're seeing me as some other animal. So it, it's, an, it's a little quirky feature. For I, I got it. I got it. Uh, I'm curious. Okay. Another thing, for example, okay, if you make Google Docs, so the, this, the, in, in course work, the Google Sheets, I do and I work Google Sheets like too much but she has a little problem because everybody writes in their own cell and if two people are writing in the same cell at the same time then there are issues fortunately the people at google also have this the edit history and you see in the different so what has happened with this particular cell so you can see if somebody's oh. written over or if they've written back which is very nice <gasps> Awesome. You can also see that here in the file where you see the version history. And in the version history, you can also see the history of the file and how things have been working. And you can see uh, the different versions that have been happening during all the time that the file has been created. And you can even add things. And in this case, most of us are anonymous. But then you can see that I've been editing and then I is everything in green and everybody else is in other colors and all sorts of things. And this is super nice if you're having your students do group work because awesome. with this, you can tell who did what where, which is awesome. very, very useful, yeah. especially in class. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, in documents, people, in documents, people 
can edit at the same time. And if you're editing at the same time, you can, you can see the other people writing real time. You can see them writing at the same moment, which is very fun or very interesting. Uh, only people who have the link up and have Google accounts can join. No, not necessarily. You can, um, maybe some of you have Hotmail accounts. It depends on how the file is shared. If I share this, now this file is only for me. Let, let me give it any name. And here in advanced, I can choose. So for example, here, I can have it so that I'm at my school can see it or only the people in my school that I give the link, or if I do it up here public on the web, anybody could edit it. And like you see over here, it says it, no sign in is required. They don't have to have a Google account. Awesome. So you can share this with people from outside. Ahora, there are uh, things that are better if they have a Google account because you can trace some of what they did and it's easier for the person to find the, the file after because when you do these sorts of things in Google Drive, because of course it's all here where it says shared, you can see all the files that have been shared with you. For example, here's the Google Meeting file that I shared, and here's other things that people have been sharing with me all this time. And if I wish, I can, I can take this and then add a shortcut to my drive so that I will keep it in the same place forever. Because here right now, I can see, let's, let's put it here in 2019, 2020. Okay. So here, uh, the things here that are in, in, in shared with me, it's all the things that have been shared with me forever. So it becomes a little, sorry, you can get lost here really easily. Of course, since it is Google, you can search for anything you like within it. And it doesn't have to be just online because it's the content. So if I'm looking for somewhere where I wrote uh, something about uh, permissions, there you go. So it'll show me all the files that either have the word permission or the title permission is in there. So all these files somewhere have the word permission. Okay. So people like me, who are a little messy, sometimes um, I, I forget to put things in the right place and then I wind up having to look for everything. And then since it's uh, powered by Google, the search function is very, very good. Uh, what else do you have in the Google Suite? Uh, let's see, wait, let's, let's see. Okay, Google okay. Meet. In the case of Google Meet, uh, Google Meet are part of the service, and only if you're paying for the Google Suite can you do Google Meet. You can attend them with a with a you can attend meets with 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 any account, with any Google account, but you can only create meets with um with Google for Education or Google for Business accounts. And right now, um, Google is giving away for free a premium feature, which is the ability to record meets. So you can have a recording. So if you do a class, you can record the class for the people who are absent or for the people who want to review and go back and see what awesome. it is that was said during the class. And that's going to be until, I think they extended the date until September, but I'm not sure right now. Um, let's see what else. Okay, Meet Hangouts. What's the difference between Meet and Hangouts? Hangouts is the old Meet, and uh, it is going to go away in the future. Oh. They haven't specified exactly when in the future, but it will go away, and it will be replaced, with, at least Hangouts will be replaced by something called Google Chat, which, let me check, I think, I'm not sure if I have access to chat. Yes, this is what chat looks like. And it's similar to Hangouts, but at the same time, it's cool. And it, I haven't gotten used to this and I don't use it very much. It, I don't know about Russia, but you, we send up a lot. So normally most of my communications uh, go through WhatsApp in, that, uh, in like, like texting. 
a okay google mark google classroom okay importing the marks okay let me go and find a classroom that has been shared with me that actually has marks because the ones i do don't uh, what do you have can i ask you a question what, what do you have instead We're, of the marks we have grades oh That's the word <laughs> yeah i got it okay so, uh, for example, here where it says grades, this is a Spanish class. One of the Spanish teachers uh, shared it with me because she wanted me to help her out with something. So I can use to look and around, but try and not to. But say, for example, here she gave them an activity, and the activity was graded from one to one hundred. And then right here she has all the grades ready to put into our student information system. It, somewhere in here. But the problem is, I don't know exactly where. There is a way where I can, um, where I can export this into a sheet, and then I can copy paste that sheet somewhere else. But right now, this has changed, and this is not one of the features that I use very often. So I'm sorry to say I can't tell you exactly where, but I know that it can be done. Oh, that's awesome. All the grades are kept here. Uh, here you can see if you want to know what this activity was about, you can click here. And it's, it's, uh, these are documents that the journal and then I could uh, look at any one of these. Let's see, let's look for fun. Okay, so I could look at any one of these, and this is how the teacher grades it. The teacher has uh, access to the same. This is whatever it is that he wrote. And she follows answers and she can write here in the comments here. And if she wanted to, she could add comments to the student, uh, him or adding him or making sure that whatever it is that he did has to be done. And it's simple to grade, and then all you have to do is go to the next student and then go to the next file. And all you have to do is grade. And uh, it's very simple, and it's, you, know, you don't have to open multiple files at the same time. It's all in one place. So it's very nice to grade. Also, you can also make rubrics. And if you make a grade, you have the term rubrics, or if you have some other term, because I know in England, it's a called, I think it's called like a marking scheme. I'm not sure. But for example, I think I have an example of a rubric here somewhere. Okay. This, for example, this one is a rubric. Wait. Okay, um, I pre-write uh, like the grading scheme that I, that I use for my students. And then when I am going to grade them, let's see, when I am going to, let me check to see, I have it somewhere there. Okay, for example, this one, okay. When I am going to grade, then I already have the entire time make a rule. Sorry. It took the time to make rubrics. Then here, zero times. Then I'm going to see everything that my student handed in. And then here in the grading scheme, I'm going to have my rubric next to me. And all I have to do is if I know the different uh, criteria that I use, all I have to do is just click on the different ones. If I forgot what they are, I can I can click this and I can remember how much each one gets the points and then assign the points according to the grading scheme that I did. I can also add a private comment and I can send it to the student. And everything works very well. And it's very comfortable for the teacher to grade because you everything is in one place. Okay. Okay. Um what else? Let's go back to questions. Okay, Google accounts, is it possible to connect two accounts? Um, yes and no. You can work with two accounts at the same time, but I personally, for example, I have, a, I have three Google accounts that I use often. I use my personal Google account, which is my email. I use my school Google account, which is what I call the teacher's account. And I have my Google certified trainer account that I use for training and for messing around. I have my own Google domain, which is part of, which is one of the things that I can use as a Google trainer. 
so I can mess around and I can test and I can learn how to uh, work a Google Suite. I, I can learn how to administrate a Google Suite domain. So that's one of the perks that I have. The domain I have to purchase, but the license is free. And with that, I can, I can do all sorts of things. Um, you can use them at the same time, but then you can get confused. So for example, if you have the uh, accounts on your phone, and this is one of the things that I like to share, this is very interesting. There is a Google service that includes, that's all Google Photos. And Google Photos will store all your pictures and they'll send, and they also have lots of different things. You can, it also stores them and organizes them by date. So I can go back to, for example, April of 2016, and it'll show me the pictures that were taken during that time. And the thing is, if I make a mistake and I'm using several accounts at the same time, then maybe some of my personal pictures will show up here in the school account. And I don't want that. So if I try and use two different accounts, sometimes it has happened with teachers that work with me that sometimes you're going to see them in their bikini because they mistakenly, they were using the wrong account when they were using Google Photos. So that can be sad. You can do it, but it's uh, strange and you can get, I'm not saying that you're getting into trouble, but you can get into awkward situations. Uh, students can join during their, using their existing Google accounts, but you're going to have trouble if, if, if the school account doesn't allow you to share with outside uh, accounts. For, normally, when, it, when G Suite is set up at the beginning, the standard uh, definition for the suite is that you can only share very easily, very easily with people within the same school domain, but not with people from outside, which can be a bit of a problem. Or if you're worried about people sharing things that they shouldn't, well, that's like a piece of security. Eh, a ver. Eh, if you want to know everything about Google Meet and Google, the best thing you can do is open a Gmail account and start playing. There is nothing you can do that breaks it. But unless you change the password to something you don't know, but it's very, very, very hard to break. Okay, and then somebody, somebody asked a beautiful question, which is one of the services that I really love, which is Google Forms. Okay, Google Forms is actually, it's a very nice thing. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a service that lets you create search and quizzes. And, uh, but what people don't realize is that Google is actually uh, a part of Google Sheets because everything that you do in Google Forms is automatically uh, put into a Google Sheet, either if you do it on purpose or if you do it, or, or if you, for example, uh, this is an example that I use to show people how it works. Uh, these are different types of questions. You can, you can ask different types of questions. You can have either check boxes or you can have uh, multiple choice and things like that. Um, when people respond, everything arrives in this page. But if you click here, it will also create a spreadsheet with all the information. So if you use this to make space, you can use after to do all the data processing or whatever it is that you need. It, there was a question, remember, in Google Forms, way to limit it by time. Uh, yes, yeah, and no, there is a very pr primitive way of limiting it is if you tell the kids that they will have until a certain time. And then after that time, you take this switch over here and you turn it off and they can't answer the form anymore. There is a, a, a person that has, um, they, they've created an, an app and it's called Timeify Me, I think. Yes, it's this. And then you link this with your Google account and it does cost money. As uh, you see here, it has, uh, it has a price. For the basic features, you can only do it with a limited amount of forms. But the premium feature has, I don't know how many points, uh, I don't know how many uh, forms that you take. And it has different costs per user per month. 
So you have limits on how many things you can grade. For example, the free version, you can only have 100 tests. And that is not, they don't mean 100 different tests. They mean a test with 100 answers, which is, which, which is nice I do it for you. And they also tell you how much, how much time the students spend on the test and everything, but it requires you to, to pay the developer. Uh, what else, what else? Uh, what else would you guys like to know? I, I don't know. I, I like to talk and talk and talk and talk, but sometimes... Yeah, we're so sorry that there are no videos because the connection isn't perfect. We try, you know, to... Don't worry. Yeah, so that's why we turned off everything, just to hear you better. Yeah, and uh, if anybody has uh, questions, it would be just perfect, yeah, to ask, because Louis is such a really experienced person here about this. I was really impressed about Google Sheets because, it, honestly, it's something new to me. To work like no, this. And Google Sheets is super powerful. And uh, for example, in 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 for example, in Microsoft Excel, you can share data among different sheets, but the sheets has to be in a very very specific location. Here, it doesn't matter because the sheet lives in the URL in the in the web in the web address. So the web address is never going to change. So if you're going to link different sheets, you link them using the web address. So even if you move them around within your Google Drive, uh, the sheet will the sheet address will always be the same. So it's not not easy for you to move around and reorganize and lose the screen. Especially since I have files that are linked, I have like I have one master file that I have more than a hundred files that link to it. So every time I make changes. Very about uh, Google certification. So, uh, wow. let me because I don't know the, the address. I, I, uh, Google certified teachers is um, it is a course and a test. The course is free. This is the website. I put it in the wake list. And the course is free. There are two levels of teachers. There's an educator level one and an educator level two. Level one basically shows that you're a teacher that knows how to use the tools. And level two is uh, a teacher that not only knows how to use the tools, but knows how to use the tools in education to make a transformative and better experience for the kids, which is very entertaining. And then after that, you have a Google certified trainer and Google Certified Trainer is a person, for example, I can, I can easily see Anna as a Google Certified Trainer, which is a person would, who would train other teachers in the use of Google Suite for Education. And then after that, there is the Google Certified Innovator, which is a little more special. Uh, we are around 2,000 innovators around the world. It's a program that's been going for the last I'm going to say 10 years, but maybe it's a little less. Uh, what you do is they select people that are educators that are passionate about changing education and about making education easier and better for both teachers and students. And uh, it, it, it requires that you, uh, you have to propose a problem to Google that you're willing to help to solve. And you have to be very passionate and you have to show that you're a person that really is involved in trying to make this better and um, they have to choose you uh, and you get invited to go to Google offices somewhere in the world and you have to be able to get there. Once you're oh there God. and you have a hotel because you have to pay for everything. Oh my gosh. At, at the hotel, so at <laughs> Google, the courses and everything are free. They'll give you food morning, so morning so day and night. They'll give you food all day. There's food for, every, for so you have like snacks and everything all day. You have breakfast, you have lunch. You have dinner, but you have to be able to get there by yourself. So oh. I went last year. I went to New York, Ooh. and I had to pay for my, I had to pay for my airfare. Fortunately, I have friends in New York, so I stayed there, and it wasn't much of a problem. But I had to get there on my own, but with my own wallet. But it amazing. is amazing. Uh, an amazing, amazing, amazing. Wow, this is super. I just, okay. it's like Christmas. Ah, bueno. Sounds like Christmas, Almost. yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was like the best experience ever. Ahora, 
uh, educator, the, te the training is free and you do the training here in this, uh, in this website. All you have to do is sign in with your Google account and uh, you start, let me show you, I, wrong window. And uh, you start by, uh, let me choose. Okay, so you start choosing a level which you wanna start learning and then you have educator level one. Um, they, they, they guide you step by step, you get trained, it gives you examples. Uh, the whole course is supposed to take around 20 hours or 26 hours if you're willing to do the time, if, if you're willing to do everything. All you have to do is basically watch some videos. Uh, it'll, do, it'll go step by step. Uh, they'll show you different things that you need to do. Uh, there's always like little examples. There's little videos. There's little activity that you do. Uh, all you have to do is read. And I know it's available in several languages. I'm not sure... Let's see if it's available in Russian. I don't see Russian. Oh, it's, it, you know, it's always like this. I really hate this when Russia isn't here in any oh. kind of list. I hope we can at improve the, it. Yeah? At the, at the, of course. At, yeah. the, at the end of this, there's like little stuff that you had to like write out your own ideas, see what other educators were thinking. So this is your sort of online and involved with other educators. And then at the end of every lesson, there's a little test that you can add, that, that, that you can uh, try. So for example, the digital tool to integrate into your class, then uh, you, you have to have learned to do that. Like, for example, which app allows you to analyze data, but Google Sheets, and then it'll check and it'll tell you if you did it correctly. And if you did it wrong, let's say here, if you did it wrong, it'll tell you what the correct, it'll tell you that you made a mistake. So if you go through all this and you do everything, and then at the end, there's several units, it's a very good self-paced uh, course. And at the end of all of this, then you, if you wish, you can get certified. And then to get certified, then you have to pay. And uh, the test for certified level one is, I think it's $10. And uh, you have to reserve uh, a time. The test is three hours long. Uh, the test has several parts. And there's a part which is, uh, I, I'm not going to do this because I already did this, but the test has several parts. One of the, te the, the tests has a theoretical part where there's questions and you have to answer. Yeah, and yeah. there's a practical part where they're going to assign you things that you would do as a teacher. And uh, the test takes up to three hours. And I've had a lot of success with my teachers, training them up for them to do the test. Uh, one of the particular things about the test is you have a computer with a webcam because you are going to be photographed during the test. Mm -hmm. So they can make sure that you are always the same person who's taking the test and you're not cheating and you're not asking somebody to do the test for you. The course is free. Somebody asked. Uh, yeah, Pradipka. it's a good the question. Free, but the test is paid. The test for level one is $10 and the test for level two is, I am not sure. I'm not sure if it's 15 or 25. And the test for trainer, which is not only the test, there's other things that you have to do. The test for trainer, I think is also $25. Um, you know, I saw this form about the how to become, you, you've mentioned before, yeah, you show this. It was really complicated. I tried to fill it in, but um, I, I tried at least twice, but maybe that I didn't have uh, the previous cer uh, certification, like the level one and two, but uh, it was always a mistake. I don't know what is it, what was wrong about this. Uh, I don't know, for level, for trainer, you need to do both level one and yeah, level two. Yeah, maybe it was the, the problem, <laughs> but it was funny, wasting and time with this. They yeah. also ask you to submit samples of things that you've done, a feedback from the people that you've trained. Uh, they also ask you to submit a video that, where you present yourself and you also uh, present uh, something that you're training people on. So, so for example, I did, uh, there is a service called Cast for Education, which allows students to share their screen with, with, uh, with another computer. So I did a little training on how to set that up. And that's the video that I showed. 
the same thing for Google Certified Innovator. They also ask you to fill out a bunch of forms. Yeah, yeah, this one, I guess. It was this a one. Video. They ask you to submit a video and the video has to be at least, this year it's a minute and a half long. And you have to be able to present yourself and present the problem in 90 seconds. Yeah, there is a question from Alona. She's asking, what does it give you? I mean, okay. this certification, yeah, why do teachers in your country apply for it? Maybe there, again, maybe there are difference between Russia and Colombia, but in, yeah. In my country, it's not as popular as in other countries, like in the United States and Spain and, uh, and Britain. Uh, the certification is, let's call it proof, that you can use the tools in an educational environment. And you have to recertify for uh, every three years, you have to recertify if you want to keep up to date because Google, everything changes very, very rapidly. So every three years, you have to recertify. Wow, this is clever, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh huh. Uh, in our country, it's not popular at all any certification. I mean, uh, but no, I I think it just has started um, to improve because uh, anyway, there is Wakelet certification. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Flipgrid. Uh, okay, Wakelet again maybe is coming. And um, Luis, I just wanted to ask you. So you use um, uh, this Wakelet extension. So is it like for how long have you been using it? Uh, for maybe three months. Oh, so do, do you enjoy it? Why you why not Evernote, for example? Because many people ask me, hey, what is the difference between them? <laughs> well, I look, I like Wakelet because it's it's more public and it's easier to share yeah. than Evernote. And <laughs> instead of Evernote, I use Google Keep, which I love. It, it will keep. On, let me wait. Let me let me share my screen again. Awesome. Okay. I think it's really handy that I, I've seen that you just uh, use it like everywhere on your Google browser. Okay. Google Keep. There you go. Okay. So, but from Google. And then uh, the big difference is, for example, Think that I'm showing you my password is not a password. Well, okay. Um, <laughs> Google Keep allows me to put up little notes or to put up little uh, lists. Mm -hmm. It also allows me to share uh, notes with other people who also keep. So for example, uh, I, I, I say that I have like two personalities. I have the teacher and the, and the person in private. And I share the stuff between them so that I don't get confused from one to the other. But one of the beautiful things about Google Keep is that you can, let me see if you can have an example. For example, this is a picture I took with my phone from a, from a, from a French uh, lesson plan. And then after, look at this. It automatically uh, took the, the text from the picture and put it into the Keep, which I find to be beautiful. Wow. Wow, and the, here is the question. I'm sorry that I'm interrupting you this, yeah, this way. Worry. But what about the immersive reader? Is there any version of this kind of tool for inclusive learning? Um, there are tools that have been added, but you have to add them separately. They're not included within. Uh, I've seen the immersive reader, and it's beautiful. But uh, they don't bring it inside the service. But, for example, let me... Let me open uh, one of my favorite stories, and I have a book, book, which is called Read and Write. Wow. Uh, and then what I can do with this tool is it's, a, it's an extension for Chrome. I can select the text and then I press play. And I can have it read it out to me. I don't know if you heard it. Oh uh, yeah, I've heard it a bit. I don't know like what about the others, but I've heard it. Um, okay. 
And yeah. then also I can, for example, I can I can use these highlighters and I can wait. wait. I can also, for example, select different words. Wow, it looks fantastic. You just made my day. <laughs> I can select different words with this. And let's suppose that I am making up like the vocabulary for this uh, for this for this reading. And then I can have it. Where is it? Wait, there's a little button here that I press. Wow, this is my favorite part. Wait, oh, wait. Ah. <laughs> okay, here it is. It generates a vocabulary list out of these, out of these words. Now, uh, I forget what the words. So, which is the first word? The, 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 the automatic and do anything. Yeah. And then this is so also. And then if I'm the very complicated concept, but okay, there's also the, the, the pictures over here. And you can have notes and share this vocabulary list with your students, which is a very nice thing to do. Called uh, read and write the extension. Uh, Luis, it was a really poor connection. Can you repeat what have you done uh, before? Your, your step with this? Uh, how? Oh, okay. Yeah. How, how, first, how was it? <laughs> give me one second. First, Google Chrome and it, it works so well. I have to install this yeah. extension. It's called Read and Write. Okay. Okay. And then after I install the extension, then this is the this little purple icon is the icon for read and write, and I make it come up. And then wow. this is what gives me all the options. For example, uh, when I was reading, I noticed that Carlos, who's the reader, yeah. was talking really. And if I don't like Carlos, and I can <gasps> change her. I can wow. Her so now I can have him or her read again. And give me one second. So now. <laughs> Wow, the pronunciation is awesome. The voice. Oh, I have a question. On Microsoft Immersive Reader, there is, you know, mm -hmm. um, like feminino, masculino uh, yeah. uh, voices. Uh, and um, uh, is it possible to make that here? It, it's not like the best feature ever, but I'm just curious about this. Oh, both idioma, see. But yeah. oh my God, lots There's of dialects. I don't know how many of them there are. For example, oh. Uh, there's ah, there's Russian and there's Yana. Oh my Yana. God! And Yuri. Yuri. <laughs> if, if if I select Yuri and I ask Yuri to read, this is not Russian, so it's gonna be very strange. Oh. Oh my God. Because it's trying to read in Russian. But, but you know, you've got we've got similarities in the pronunciation way, uh, like comparing to English. Yeah, for example, English and Russian are totally different in pronunciation. Yeah. Wow, Russian Yuri, <laughs> awesome! I I haven't known about this feature before. You just really made my day. I like the features like this. I'm just a huge fan of storytelling and anything dealing with it. But it's awesome. Thank you so much for this. It's like a, amazing. <laughs> wow uh, okay maybe uh, anybody else has got questions about google features is there for indian <laughs> I, I knew that question is, uh, is coming about the languages <laughs> i think i think it, remember that indian is very there's lots of languages yeah like hindi language. is it hindi what, what are you talking about yeah just clarify uh, please a bit uh, I know Hindi. Irish. Ooh, yeah. Irish. No, 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 I, so I don't know. Like, oh, Irish. <laughs> here's Hindi. Yeah. Oh, you see? Yes. And then, for right. example, this Spanish Monica should be in Indian Spanish. So she should speak with a Spanish accent instead of a Latin accent. Yep. It, it, it does the thing with the fade in the fade. Okay, it's amazing. Just amazing. Wow. <laughs> wow, thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah, is there? Yes, Hindi. Yeah, awesome. 
so um if, if, if it's that's it so we just can um say a huge thanks to Louise because it was wonderful it was amazingly informative and Louise prepared um the fantastic collection for you with great resources and links and wakelet collection that we are going to share with him with you of course let's grab a selfie from this meeting so I just want you to turn on your cameras and let's yeah let's oh okay <laughs> here it comes Ah, no, if I knew we were going to do flags, wait. Ah. Helen, I was ready for you. Okay, wait. We are waiting, okay. Uh, because, you know, when I uh, have told you about the selfie part, everybody started to do this way. <laughs> and I just couldn't uh, catch you. Uh, what what happened? Uh, Lucien, I'm going to share with one picture only with you. It was really fantastic. <laughs> okay. Now everybody is great. I uh, I think we are we we, we look really um, amazing there. So um so no more questions then. No, thank you. It thank was you so much. Yeah. Hello, open my camera, open my camera, open my camera. Oh, one sec, one sec, come on, sec. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, can you try to turn it on again? Yay, oh no, yes, yeah, yeah, so okay. ready? Okay, the next selfie is coming, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh, Louise, you're all amazing. <laughs> okay, this is awesome, something amazing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, I think that's uh, it. And um, we want to say a huge thanks to you uh, for being with us today. I'm going to share with the recording of this version, of the session version. <laughs> There's only one version. It's a pretty unique one. I want to say thanks to everybody. And uh, so thank you, Liz. This is the end. I uh, totally appreciate your time. You are the best. Okay, and one more question. Anytime. What, what, what is the best um, uh, yes. of your tips? Uh, where, from what step we should start to take this, um, to be certified, okay? Uh, the best thing you can do is use it and uh, mess around, try and break it. Um, there is nothing you can do that's going to make Google explode, so don't worry about it. Um, the best thing you can do is learn from your mistakes and make a lot of mistakes, and that is perfectly valid. Awesome. This is such a good advice indeed. <laughs> so uh, take care, uh, stay safe and uh, stay healthy. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias por tu ayuda. Claro. Anytime, whatever you need. Thank you. Bye-bye. Adios. Adios. Have a good day. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Bye.